Okay, we'll call the meeting to order for the Conservation Commission Tuesday, September 12th. Um, first on the agenda, we need a vote to approve the minutes from Tuesday, August 22nd. <coughs> Back in death. That was on here. Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes from August 22nd, say aye. Who? Aye. Said yes. Said yes. Aye. Bill said yes. Joe? Approve the minutes? Yes. I guess so. so the minutes are approved. Um, informal, we have Shannon Boomsma. Here yet. Don't see her, but we can come back to her. Uh, hi, um, my name's Aaron. I'm from White Engineering. Uh, Shannon couldn't make it tonight, so I'll, I'll be representing her. Okay. And your last name, Aaron? Biazin. B-I-A-S-I-N. Thank you. I'll wait to, um, I'll talk about it here. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so the, the first thing that um, we wanted to talk about was was the emergency request? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a few. So which, we have which two. One, which we one? have two. So we have the one for um, this is for the one for twenty three Mackinac Road. Yep. And they're having they want to remove a tree that is near a stream. Uh, yes. Um, I could show you. Uh. If I could, if I could share the screen. So uh, th this right here is the tree that's in question it is um, you can kind of see the, the stream bank flowing through here, it's pretty steep on both sides. And the tree during the last storm got washed out underneath and is now leaning up against the house. Uh, so th this is the tree that they would like uh, to be removed. And um, then they they're willing to plant one tree in its place or probably on, on their side of the bank. Uh, j just to do a one-to-one -one offset. And they'll leave the stump in place? Yes. Yes, okay. yes. And are they removing it from the... Can you just talk about how they're going to remove it? Um, Animal disturbance to the bank, I assume. Yes. I, I, I'm, they'll probably have to start uh, cutting higher up first. Because if they cut down down low, I think the rest of the tree will continue to fall in the house the way that it's leaning right now. So um, they'll, they'll start the cutting probably up high and then work their way down and, and leave the stump in place. Okay. And what are you proposing to replace it with? Um, it, the tree appears to be a maple tree right now. So we were thinking of uh, a native maple species. Okay, probably med, red maple down there would do better than sugar maple. Okay. Any questions? I walked over, it's four houses down from me and yeah. and yeah, it's clearly a, a threat to, to the house and it's it's pulled out of the, the edge of the stream. I, you know, I could okay. absolutely with support. Okay, so do we have an, a motion to approve an emergency removal? So moved. Second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, we'll sign it tonight. Thank you guys. And then um the, the the second one was um we're getting ready to submit a notice of intent at zero Dugway Road in Stockbridge. Uh the, the driveway portion is, is in the uh riverfront, uh only for uh, about the first 75 feet or so of the driveway. Uh, it's out of the, it's all, the whole property is in, well, the front of the property is in the outer riparian zone. None of the property is in the inner riparian zone of 
Bohawk Brook. Um, so we were just wondering if we could set up a site visit and if you want, I can kind of walk you through the project a little bit right now. Okay, go ahead. Uh, hold on just a second. I'll get it up. So uh, th this second orange line right here is uh, is the 200 foot mark from Mohawk Bank or Mohawk Brook. Um, so just this beginning portion of the driveway is in the riverfront area. And then the rest of the property is the rest of the project is out, out, out of the riverfront area. Uh, we're not in scenic mountain act jurisdiction either. There is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven 11, trees, uh, for the, uh, uh, being that 12. 12 trees in the riverfront area that will will be removed. Um, we were planning on doing a one-to-one -one replacement. The larger blue circles are uh, our trees at one-to-one. -one. And then uh, any shrub shrub were, uh, shrub plantings, we're planning on doing two-to-one. Uh, we're still working with the landscape architect on what exactly those plant spe species will be, but they will be... Uh, native species and it's just it's a fairly steep property to get up to the top of uh, the flat area where they want to build so the driveway grading is pretty extensive right now um we're working on uh some other measures right now to keep that within the 10 percent threshold and um we were just wondering if we could set up a site visit with the commission uh pretty soon mm -hmm. okay so do we know when Ron is back? No. Um, so maybe I, I'd like the um, chair to be there for the site visit if possible. So um, maybe we can set it up for next the end of next week and hope that he's back. Yep. Uh, yeah, that, that'll work. Either myself or Shannon can um, can can take the site visit we can work with with your hours um okay. if you want to plan for uh uh about friday the 22nd yep that works for me yep yep mm -hmm. we, can, we can make that work do you have a time that you prefer uh, around 3 15 3 30 would work can you do the 20 seconds so that's what I'm looking to find out. September and October for May this year are absolutely enough. Now, don't do that. Don't do that. Sorry. I can't get out of this. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, uh, three fifteen on the twenty second. Sounds good. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, yeah. I, I I believe that's it. Unless you guys had any questions about the that project, or we can hold that off till uh, till the site visit. Yep. Yeah, if we you can get. Can you get paperwork to us before then? Yes, we can. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda, 21 Lakeview Drive. Uh, request for determination. Stone patio, retaining wall. Okay. Uh, Ryan Sider with Foresight. And we, several of you came out to visit this site. Um, it's on the lake off of Lakeview Drive. Um, 
they had a previous order of conditions to install the driveway and build the house in an existing footprint of the uh, original house. That work's all been done. Um, new owners, the want to finish work that hadn't been completed under the original order of conditions, which expired. Uh, so their intent is just to, under this RDA, is to finish this patio, or we had proposed a patio with a retention wall, retaining wall. Um, instead of the retaining wall, we're proposing to just do a patio with more spacing between the stones, two to four inch spacing between stones, and then maintain the existing grade um, with lawn down to the um, where the silt fence was. And then they just have large boulders as steps to get up the eight inches to the um, doorways. And this needs to be completed before they can move up and complete the driveway work because it's uh, um, they won't be able to get equipment down. So when afterwards. we did the so. site visit, um, there was a lot of talk about impervious surfaces. And I, I, right. Ron, I know, and, and the rest of us on the site visit really recommended a deck with facing for the water to move through as opposed to the patio. Yeah, the deck was an option and still could be, but the idea was that uh, to not put this, uh, expand the footprint under the LPOD, mm -hmm. which a deck would do um, area-wise. Um, yeah, the idea is this is already this, the grade is already there. The idea is to, you know, the more spacing between the stones will allow the perviousness down through the um, you know grass or gravel that's between the stones, and then uh, seed and replant this that's currently a, a muddy mess <laughs> that was left from construction. Um, so this is the option that we wanted to, to have you consider. Um, what was? And then we're also solving the issue with the downspouts that were there with the stone apron to disperse the water. I did. I, I know on the site visit, I didn't like the loss of the uh, uh, previous there. What's the square footage? Well, versus versus yeah. lawn, this gravel would be um, similar, and that's why we have larger spacing in between. It's almost like a, a grass lawn, but with large stones placed in it for um, you know to have that sort of patio area. But. We, are, we removed the retaining wall because of the animal passage issues and everything. We're going to need a uh, request for a certificate of compliance on the old. The original order? Yeah. And that has to get cleared out before you can do something new. Also, when we visited it, there was quite a bit of erosion down the, down the slope there. Well, that's what we're there. trying to solve with the seeding and loaming this and also finishing this retention wall that's when you get the infiltrators in the driveway and then all this you know the water coming off the driveway goes into the drainage structures rather than right now where it's running down the hill and um sally your point with the coc i guess we're the intent is to have this just a minor change to finish out the original order conditions, which never got completed. But, well, you can do a, you can ask for a partial. Partial certificate. For the work that's been done would be covered under the certificate of compliance. And but, then, okay. um, and then this work would be in effect new, even though it's the same as what was there. This and you're gonna say in your option. request that this part, that whatever, whatever has not been done under the original Order of conditions, you will you will identify that in your request. Okay. Request for certificate of compliance. So that you can have a, a complete or a partial. And right. so you're gonna ask for a partial and you're gonna say these portions of the order of condition or the the proposal, the notice of intent have not been completed. At that point we have to then Submit for another. Well, if the work we submit the notice of intent. No. Almost, or well, this is new work. This, this needs, yeah, this this needs. Yeah, you. Well, I did. I did. 
That's the preference. Okay. The alternative is to do it exactly as what's planned in the original order of conditions with the intent of just getting it closed out um, as a grass lawn, as it is just seeding and planting. If that's in the original. Um, but if the order of conditions expired, don't they need to read? They can't, they can't continue work under the original order of conditions because it's expired. Right. If somebody has but it's not allowable under an RDA. I guess that was the it has to be identified under the RDA. So if we have all the work that's going to be included identified in the RDA, then it could potentially be an RDA, but even though it's which it is. What but it what's the distance to the lake? It's it's very close. Well so the existing disturbance is um, you know, probably 20 feet, but the intent is to clean it up and get out of there with everything to, to finish it up and leave it in a better condition than it currently is. And we're, we're still willing to do the plantings that are under the original RDA. Um, they'd like to do that, um, which is on neither of these plans, but the original RDA submitted had native plantings as well. Um, but I guess we're just trying to close this out to get out of that area entirely and clean it up. So in a timely manner, what are our options um, to get that? Well, unfortunately, yes, the fact so. that it's expired means that the original work can't be done because at the moment it's not permitted. Right. So it has to be, it has to be resubmitted in some form, whether it can be submitted under an RDA or whether it needs a new notice of intent, I don't know. I, given the distance to the lake, Twenty feet from the lake, right. unless you, you know, if you go back to the original. With well, existing lawn. disturbance again, because the house was there. Yeah. It's more to fix what's already been disturbed. So it's a bare land now, essentially. It's bare land with a lot of erosion going on. It's basically a gravel surface up to the silt fence. Okay. Right. It was approved um, grass, not a patio. It was approved as grass. Yes. Yeah. I missed the site visit. What's the slope? What are we talking for the for that grass slope down to the water? It, the original proposal was a three to one grass slope away from the house. <laughs> yeah. So the existing conditions are a little less than that. It's kind of flat and then tapers off. And they're just the idea was to convert that into a patio with grass or gravel in between the stones and then have a grass slope. <clears throat> Not the over downside. Not over slope. three to one. Um, well, the existing is not probably a little steeper than three to one. The way it was left. Two to one construction. Like that. Two to one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's very steep coming down from the driveway. They have a lot of erosion happening down this side slope up to the slope fence because this wall has not been completed yet. Um, so all the water off the driveway is essentially going down to the erosion controls. Uh, but it's not practical to finish this wall or the driveway until the work in the front of the house is done. Any other questions? Is what, what happens along the water edge um, for planting? But maybe that'll be in this is all RDA. Yeah, well, the original RDA plan I submitted has nat native plantings along the edge of the silt fence. This is all, this is all forested already. What do you mean by native plants? Um, I think they were um, red osier, dogwood, uh, high bush blueberry. Shrub, shrub plants? Some shrubs, yeah, mostly shrubs. Yeah. I'm, I'm concerned, I mean, you, that whole driveway structure has created this great funnel down to the north bank alongside the house. And pretty clearly the plan that could combat that was the infiltrators that were to be placed under the driveway. Correct. I don't understand why that hasn't happened. It, well, I guess because it can't be done until this wall is built to, to level the driveway out. So it's it's a sequential construction where they have to get the equipment back out because there's no way to access down below once this is completed. So this is exactly as it was the original order conditions is to finish the wall and the infiltrators, which are all on site, um, all this material, but I guess we just have to figure out what to do here first. So try, in the interest of time, what's the, you know, 
can we do under an RDA the original grass lawn idea where we just finish it and seed it and get out of there? Um, or is it or do we have to come back with a notice of intent? Isn't time of the essence where we need them to get some grass seed down? They should yeah. stabilize the site. Yeah, we need yeah. to stabilize the site. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm a little perplexed as to why Ron would mention a deck instead we of a patio. We said a deck. Ron, Ron did not like the patio. None of us like the patio. Um, the deck just so the water would um, yeah, but would go it's through it. closer to the lake than the structure, right? Yes. So, as far as I'm concerned, you don't like either one. Uh -uh. okay. I mean, I would, I, okay I would go. We've go always, yeah. that's, we've always, we've always been okay with a stone patio for the reason that it was not a structure. Mm -hmm. I don't like twenty feet from the. And we increase the distance. I don't like between them as well. So more infiltration. Before the current modern house is built, was there a house? With a deck that came that close to the to the lake. No, it's what was the what was the footprint of the property that was was replaced by the current modern house? I believe it was exactly the same footprint. I believe it so was. So they had torn was, down the house and then built it in the same footprint. I think this house just put a um, basement on where before I think it was on somewhat stilts on the front. Yes, but it's the same footprint. And I'm not quite sure why it wasn't seeded, why it's left barren. And covered with gravel. Yeah. Well, I suppose with the intent of having finish it as a patio, which just never got done because it, but it wasn't changed owners. But the original uh, order didn't, it said grass. The house that let them it said grass, yes. Not patio. Uh, it was just that the construction was ongoing, so right, it never but got finished. Or were you? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So the current owners didn't dig it up and make it a mess. It was just left over as part of the construction. <laughs> finished. The house is mostly finished now, but not completely. But they really want to get the driveway completed, clean this all up, and then stop the erosion that's happening down here, wash out down the side of the house. Um, and the intent was to have this as some sort of usable space, uh, you know, patio that's pervious. Something where they could clean it up as it is currently. So if it went back to the original um, proposal, that would be a new. I don't know why it would be an idea. Wouldn't it be a notice of intent that close, even if they're just if they're going back to grass there? Well, I think oh. they're just seeding it to finish it up. I I it's think just, that's okay. kind of. That, that, that to me is okay. If they're talking about putting a deck or a patio, I would be totally opposed to a deck. Um, but a patio, maybe. But that that would, being that close to the lake, it's probably a notice of intent if they wanted to a patio. Okay. And I wouldn't guarantee we'd go for it either. So. I, I wouldn't go for it. So, so I think the options are either the RDA with the grass or, yeah, I'm, or go to do an answer in the for the time. So and, and allow other um, commissioners to look at it to do another site visit. Yeah, because I I would want to see it. I don't remember. Most of the people here haven't seen it. I don't so the know. ideal situation is that they see it and they, they show us where they, what they want to do. It's plan another site visit. It'll probably be done for the work to be done in the spring. Is that what you're thinking? That's not apparently what they want. But well, they want to loam and seed it as soon as possible. You probably have a couple. We want of it. Weeks to we do want it loamed and seeded. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't think we need a site visit if they do, we're going to seed it. Right. Right. We want we want them to seed it ASAP because this is the week. And then if they want to talk about doing the patio, we'll, we'll discuss that in the future, right? That, I think that makes sense. Okay. Right. Right. That's why I brought the other option is just to complete the work as the original order condition was so that it's yep. cleaned up and it's stabilized. Okay. Um, but since it expired, it still needs to be. He's got the RDA though. So, but we do need, we do need the certificate of compliance, even if it's a partial. Okay. And just identify what work has been done, what work has not been done, and stating that it will not be done under that order because the order has expired. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does, but that would be a separate submission or a letter for a request for it. So you have to, you're going to have to do that. A DEP does not like to have two open um, 
applications on one property for basically the same work. They get all hot and bothered about that. Okay. Would you entertain a negative RDA for this work tonight, though, or is it? Not without the certificate another... of compliance. Okay. But we can do that quickly. Okay. But I would, I think, I think, I think we want to have it planted. Yeah, we had spoken to the contractor about replacing those silt socks that had been they are just deteriorated. They're not doing anything. We're right. doing the job. Yeah. Um, and the, and the silt is really built up at the silt fence down there, therefore at the bottom. And you said you were not going to put, do something for the downspouts so that they actually <laughs> Disperse somehow better because right now they're well. A stone up apron is off off to the to the side. A stone apron to disperse the water, so it's not contributing to the erosion down toward the bank. Um, right now, it's redirecting it's, it. It's coming down right at the silt fence, basically. Yes. Would you consider uh, annual ride just to hold it if uh, the, your window for seating is? Not that big. Like temporary. Well, just seating. Yeah, just to stabilize the site. I mean, is it allowable to loam and seed it now as it is without an RDA? Because that's an improvement over the I think conditions. I think the fact that we have the RDA and the fact that we don't want it to continue to well, erode. I think I would feel comfortable with you going ahead and doing that work to stabilize the site. Okay. Just the loaming and seeding. Just the loaming and seeding. Okay. But still, yes, get all the get all the paperwork. Right, certificate of compliance, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll go from there if we need it. And a patio or anything would be a notice of intent separately. Okay. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know my time on the concom is gone, and, and in many ways, I say thank God. But this is a typical <laughs> this is a typical example of. Um, where if the contractor had signed off on this originally, knew all the ramifications of everything that needed to go on, <clears throat> maybe you would not be dealing with this problem right now. And I'm talking about putting that plan in front of the contractor saying, this is the way it's going to be, and having his signature somewhere. There. Well, if they've sold the property in the meantime, then who's paying? <laughs> It changed hands in the plan where the mail goes on the property. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it expired, so. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Without the work being done. <clears throat> okay, next on the agenda, 11 Rattlesnake Mountain Road. 13. 13? Yeah. So no one's that. here. So um, Rob is not here. They're here. They're going to be no one's here. I think. Um, <sighs> We were going to have um, we were going to have Emily review it, but I've not heard back from Emily. I've written her a couple. Of times. And did you try calling her? I have not called. Yeah, try calling her. I don't her. have her phone number. I couldn't give you her phone number. I would say call her. And this was one, uh, Dave. We wondered if you could come do a site visit on this property. Um, it's the, it's an ACA. ACEC. Um, and some of the people local, some of the neighbors have been saying that it's a very wet site. Um, the delineation that was done was based solely on vegetation, and we wanted some soil pits. And uh, Errol was the previous owner. <laughs> Go ahead. Is it, is it 11 or 13 rattlesnake? It's mountain? 13. Okay, it's 13. So that, okay. Jeff was my real estate agent when I bought it. Yeah. And I asked him about it, and he said, those two lots are fine. The third lot is a teapot. Wherever you put the shovel on the ground, you're going to hit what? Yeah. Do the time may speak. Yeah. A week and a half ago, after it had not rained for like a couple of days, which is kind of an interesting thing. Thing. So I went out and did 30 core samples after studying Stockbridge School of Agricultural stuff on, on hydric soils. Mm -hmm. 
I couldn't find any non-hydric soils on the whole property. And if you look at a um, geological map of that piece of property, mm -hmm. you'll see that it's slight, it, it, it's, I'm not going to call it a piece of property. I'm going to call it Turnpike Acres because whoever buys that's going to be listening to Turnpike 24-7, but that's okay. Um, from Rattlesnake Mountain to the brook that goes under Stan Piatchik's and Arthur Dutile's property, mm -hmm. the whole thing is slanted that way. It's all that water that comes down from the top. Yep. And then if you go across that little, there's a swale on that piece of property before you get to the brook, which turns into a brook. Mm -hmm. All the property on the other side does the exact same thing in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I don't see it as being buildable. And, um, you know, I don't really want to spend my retirement trying to protect that piece of property, but I'm willing to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sally, who did, who prepared the notice of intent for this one? I'm sorry? Rob Ackroyd. Rob Ackroyd. You know, okay. Um, do you think you, you could um, somebody reach out to Rob and just ha have him send me um, a scanned version of the entire notice of intent? Yep. I don't I don't have his contact information, so. You have my can I make a suggestion? And that is, is that look at the national geological map to see what's going on and you'll see what I'm talking about. On the other side, we got water going down towards that abomination. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious what soil series are mapped there by GAS. <laughs> um, so yeah. I'd like to schedule a site visit. Pick a time and run it by Rob. The soil maps are getting better. Maybe for that same Friday the 22nd. <laughs> um, Friday. Friday the 22nd. Is that a day that you could do it, Dave? Um, hang on. I can tell you in one second. And I don't have anything on my schedule right now for the 22nd. So it looks like I could if we wanted to try to do it together. Okay. How about yep. other people? Can you do it? Chuck? Chuck? 22nd. Yeah, I'm, um, I could do whatever time you need on the flat Friday. Okay. Everybody, anybody else? Oh, man, I'm out of the country. You're out of the country. Okay. Okay. Um, it's fun. Can we do it? Because I can't be. You guys could. So do it after the other one or before it? We, we can, we can, what are, is four o'clock too late for you, Dave? Well, you know, what I could do is I could get there earlier on my own and actually spend some time on the site. It takes me, you know, when I do delineations and this stuff, I actually spend an hour or two on a property walking around just getting a feel for the land before I do much. So I can get out there earlier and have probably an answer for you by the time you get there at four o'clock. Okay. Perfect. And site visits are open to the public, so. And David, what time do you think it's you get there at four o'clock? Oh, no, I didn't know if you wanted. I'd probably plan to get there by two. Yeah. I'll see you there. Okay. And again, it's 13, not 11, correct? Yes. Okay. Is it marked? No. 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 <laughs> but I will. I would need the. Smart. I would need the NOI before then. So the quicker Rob can send that, email that to me, the better. Okay. If you don't have it today's Tuesday, if you don't have it by Friday, let let one of us know so we make sure we get it. Okay. okay so um, 4 p.m. on the 22nd. 13 level smoke. I I just sent it, David. Um, I copied you my oh, okay. request to Rob. Okay. Tell me what. Okay. Did I, does everyone else have the NOI? Have people seen it? Yeah. Okay. I just saw the, I never saw the electronic. I never saw the electronic. Either. I don't think he sent an electronic. Well, can you ask him to send yeah. it to the commission yeah. so everybody can look at it? Commission. I don't know that he does that. And Dave. Okay. Um, David, there are a lot of ticks on that property. Okay. I'll, I'll be prepared. <laughs> Okay. okay, next on the agenda, an emerge uh, I'm sorry, uh, 12 Larry Wab Crossroad, notice of intent. Okay. Um, Larry 
Brian Slater again for Foresight. Modern Greenery Design. Uh, we're the civil designers on this, and the, the architect. Do you have any questions hey, for the designer? Sorry, I didn't catch your phone. Now let's write. Can you say the full name for the record? David Potter. Uh, first thing I'll do, I have copies of the stormwater management and erosion control plan in the bylaw. Okay. Um, That's been advertised for the next meeting. The stormwater. Okay. But that's okay. We could still. I'll leave copies. Um, and all it basically says after our study is that we're not increasing the stormwater runoff from the site because we're um, altering more than 10,000 square feet of uh, space. Um, so this is a property, 12 Larry Wong Crossroad, which is just uh, south of the Turnpike. Um, and this is the one that David reviewed. Yes. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, that's correct. I did a. This is the one that you reviewed. Of the NRAD, correct. Okay. The NRAD, yep. Yeah. So there's a uh, uh, NRAD of the wetland delineation, which Foresight has done. And the intent is to put a single family home where one used to be. There's an existing foundation. The house was uh, demolished. There's an existing garage that is a pre existing non conforming structure. Um, the intent is to replace that with a newer one that will be no more um, non-conforming than the original. Uh, but that's all outside the buffer zone. The, really, the areas within the buffer zone uh, where we're proposing are just some clearing that's needed uh, to do the grading for the septic system on the uh, west side. And a few, there's a few trees I think three or three trees. three trees, just to get enough space around the um, site to get access for equipment around the, the house. The structure is outside of the buffer zone, intentionally designed that way. But we need to get, get around to build it. So we're asking for a temporary 10 foot um, <clears throat> disturbance that will be put back to natural after the house is there. <clears throat> That's the only section where the house is. And then there's three trees that need to come down on the edge of where the field is. So that's the clearing that you just referred to in the buffer? The edge of the field will, where the grading for the septic system needs to happen. Uh, and there's one tree there, and then I think three is um, yeah, around the house. There's one on the line, and there's two, two pines so, yeah. in that 10-foot work zone that need to come down so we can just work around the house. Um, and we're replacing those. Yeah, there's in their place, there's a one-to-one -one replacement of uh, white or red pine trees, depending on um, the owner's preferences, which the entire site is going to be revegetated, not necessarily with... Um, manicured lawn, but they want to do more um, field grass and they have experience um, doing other native plantings and things. And that's yeah, in the stormwater plan on that yeah, it's it's all the page the there. Uh, so there'll be several different um, areas of plantings and they're to reestablish the disturbance. Um, but this is temporary disturbance to put in a septic system, uh, build the house, and um, then reestablish the vegetation. It's been before planning. Planning seen it? I no. don't know that. I don't think so. Um, <clears throat> Adam's on this project. He did not. The only reason to go is for the not uh, rebuild of the accessory use. So we haven't started the right. permitting on that yet. Yeah, the house meets all setback requirements. It's just the existing. Yeah, the house is by right. In the front setback. Um, and then because there's a BBW on both sides and then the southern border is actually an intermittent stream. And um, so we've proposed erosion controls on the whole downsill, downside slope of this project. And most of this area has already been mainly cleared. So it'll be a pretty large improvement over the invasive species of things that have been established there. So, um, I don't know. Uh, Dean, is anything to add? No, I think you've covered all of our all of our goals and intent. Dave, did you have comments? Well, I haven't seen the site plans. Um, 
but it sounds like what is there's some temporary work in in buffer zone is that it there's 10 foot temporary disturbance on the southeast corner of the house and once its house is built that'll all be restored and then there's a bit of disturbance 20 feet at the most where the downhill fill from the septic field goes into the zone and that will just be reseeded okay but so all the actual structures the structures are all outside of the buffer no structures within the buffer zone yeah, yeah. that sounds like a a good proposition spent a lot of time in that house as a child really really in the house mm -hmm. So I've, I've, I've heard that, Sally, that uh, we've become friends with Elizabeth over this course of this process. Oh, yeah? She, she, uh, she shared a, an awesome story about Rosie the Burrow. Yes, Rosie <laughs> and, the Burrow. Uh, some fun it sounds like the two of you had with that. She was infamous, Rosie the Burrow. <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> it sounds like it. So do we want to do a five minute site visit just so we see it? I don't know what do people think. I think it's replacing a house that was there before and it's not in the buffer okay. zone. So it's okay. kind of a non-event non in my opinion. And it's heavily forested. I mean, the whole property is heavily forested. So. And the original foundation was actually in the buffer zone, so this will be further outside of that. Yeah, there's no structure in the buffer and minimal disturbance on the outer edges of the buffer that'll be restored. Okay. So we'll close the hearing. I would I make a motion to close the hearing on this. Second that. But we still need to look at the stormwater. That'll be the next meeting. Okay, so the first all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, and we'll do the storm at the next meeting. Yes. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, next on the agenda, an emergency certification for four Lakeview Drive. Are you Mr. Abrams? I'm here, yes. Okay, great. <clears throat> Uh, I uh, just want to report that, uh, that I'm having a continued problem with a, uh, a line, a water line from my pump to my home. Uh, there was a, a major leak uh, found, and uh, with the, uh, uh, the permit, we were able to fix that. And then the contractors uh, told me that uh, there are at least two small leaks closer to the road that he would need to have some machinery on the road to be able to access and repair. So I'm hoping I can get to that and get that taken care of. Yes, we have we have an emergency certification <coughs> request from you, mm -hmm. which seems like a no brainer. <laughs> yeah. Any questions? We saw it briefly. Yeah. Okay. Um, we just need to vote to uh, do that, and we're done. Can we have a motion? So, we make a motion? the emergency, yeah. All in favor? Who's, who's second? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll sign that tonight, Mr. Abrams. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yep. Okay. And then do we need to talk about the beaver? Um, yeah, I guess we should. I have beaver also. solutions is on the thing that we got a whole big um, file from um, Mike Callahan, who has been doing uh, has been doing work in town for ever or as long as I can remember for doing putting in levelers and this and that to try and keep the beavers from doing what beavers do to people's property and their pictures and he has diagrams and all kinds of stuff which I think everybody has seen um, and he did not submit any kind of uh, formal pl um, 
application or anything, but I think he, I think he wants to know that we're okay with what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And he did get an emergency uh, permit from Board of Health. And the Board of Health is what is the organization that that now um, is the one that permits beaver issues. Used to be us, but then I don't know, maybe fifteen or twenty years ago, that that changed. Mm -hmm. so. Sorry, Sally, I don't want to contradict you, but um, I, I just went through this with another client. So yeah. the the way it's supposed to work, and it's very very complicated, um, much more complicated than it needs to be, is the um, depending on exactly what is proposed, whether it's installing a water level control device or doing a controlled breach of a beaver dam or um, removing the beavers out of the trapping season, the Board of Health issues what's called, I think what it's called is a 10-day emergency beaver permit. And then once they issue that, to be completely proper, the commission should issue its own emergency certification as well for the same thing. And that's what he asked. He has the 10 day Board of Health yeah. emergency permit, and he asked for a permit from us. Yeah. So, what, is, what there, is there paper for that? He didn't, he didn't ask for it, though. He didn't. He did. um, there. I don't think there's a specific application to a CONCOM for an emergency cert. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you, is, I'll send you, I'm just sending you now what he sent me. I've got a whole manual back in my office. I'm I'm trapped in a hotel room right now. I've got a manual in my office which has all the beaver control rules for Massachusetts, and I've got all those forms in this three ring binder, and I just don't have it at my fingertips right now. Okay, so is there something, some specific form we should issue to him? Yeah, yeah just a regular emergency certification. Okay, so we should just do well. So we can we can vote to issue an emergency certification for him to do the work, yep. based on what he sent. Yeah, is he is he proposing a breach of the dam? Mm, not that I saw. He's got. I thought he was putting a pipe over it. And a pipe and. A pond leveler so, and a leveler. Yes. Yeah. So that's. I mean. It's, it's unfortunate he's not here, but the question, if I were you, the question I would ask is, is lowering of the water level part of the proposal? If it's not, then emergency search just to install the water level control device is fine. So that suggests that the elevation where, where it's at right now is okay, and he just doesn't want it to come up higher. But if there's a breach proposed to lower the water level, I would suggest that you put something in writing in your emergency certification that says it's got to be a controlled breach. Um, no more. I think the guidelines. I think the guidelines are no more than six inches a day. There's a there's a division of fisheries and wildlife booklet called, I think it's called Living with Beavers in Massachusetts or something like that. It's got great. It's a great resource. I can actually email it to you. I think I've got it on my computer here. I can email it to you. It's okay. Kind of like a uh, uh, glorified cheat sheet for what to do. Oh, send it to the whole commission. Yeah. So, see it. so if we add to the emergency permit, if a breach is proposed, it must be a controlled bre breach of no more than six inches per day. That's what I would recommend. Cover it. Okay. Okay, we can do that. Okay. And And you might want to say something like, the water level, the water, surface water levels shall not be lowered than um, the minimum necessary to accomplish the objective, something like that. You know, that way you don't go up and, you know, there's not a crater, a dry crater out there where there used to be a lake or a pond. It's a, it's in a river, basically. Okay. So what is, what is the, what is the objective to protect a road or a house or a septic system or something? Apparently they've, it's a, it's a very wet area. Um, and all the houses that are along there are along the brook. And there, it's been, it's been troublesome since the very beginning of the okay. building of this, this project. Summer it's been really bad. And there's a, there's a large wetland across the road um that that feeds it or is fed from it i'm i'm not sure which way i think i think that this brook goes ultimately into the lake but there's a very very large wetland across the street 
and um, there are some houses that have been built there that were permitted that probably should not have been built. And so water coming into the basement is not surprising. Okay. All right. So it's uh, clearly a public health issue then. Yeah. Okay. So do you have the wording you need to add to that? Yeah. Okay. I don't see anything in what you said about, about breaching a dam. It looks, everything I see is is the about the leveler and all that kind of stuff, but I've been a, I've been away and I've have not had a chance to really. And this just came today. So. Take a quick take a. Well, I mean, the text of his letter is pretty clear. Yeah. It says, you know, we plan on resolving this problem with the installation of a pond leveler in the Beaver Dam, and a protective fence on the Beechwood Drive culvert. Okay. Carol, did you have a comment? No, I just had a question. What happens to the beaver? Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. No, what happens to the beaver? Well, oh, it's a trap, then you know. I, I, no. That's not. We unfortunately have nothing to do. Nothing to say about that. It's a board of health. The board of health says, if it's a threat to human safety, then they will they'll off the beavers. And unfortunately, what really happens is that the beavers that are left procreate like rabbits and they come back. I'm very pleased to hear that. <laughs> I come from the So beavers. it's kind of a it's kind of a shoveling against the tide project. Just saying. Okay, so do we have a motion for an emergency certificate with the wording, including the wording that Dave proposed? I'll make that motion. You're going to put in the breach wording? Just to, just to cover it, I think. It, it, it opens that option. Or you could simply say no breach is allowed by this emergency certification. If one wasn't explicitly asked for, then yeah, I, I, I see that point. You could just rule it out. Okay. Well, just another option. Okay. Just put an offer, you know, and <laughs> see what happens. All right. So, who, I'm sorry, who made the motion? Chuck. 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 Patrick. Bill. Just out of curiosity, if a breach is required and you've got a 10 day emergency permit, so you're going to tie their hands just exactly why? Because you're going to go through this whole process again when their 10 day permit expires if a breach is allowed. Either either the work is an emergency and you should allow them to do whatever work is necessary or it's not an emergency and you, do, you should deny it. You know, that's just my thought. Thoughts? Maybe that's the language that should be in in this, our response. Do you want to give us some language? Not me. No, I don't know. Um, I, mean, I, I can go either way if you want to include that language because it's under a 10 day uh, window here that's just they would need to know about it so they can do it i guess as an option that would be all right just put in the words if necessary mm -hmm. excuse me <laughs> if necessary hey, Joe, i said Joe, how are you i said just put in the um, words if necessary yeah that would work Okay, so we'll go back to the original wording, which is what you already, right, approved. So with that wording, can we take a vote? All in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. Um, Namsik? I have asked them to come into our next meeting. Okay. National Grid Planting? National Grid is getting anxious because we have not finished up this proposal because we don't we have not gotten our act together to figure out the planting, which we really need to figure out. It was the planting around town. Yeah, I mean we really need to we need to get that. Oh, we we can't say to be determined. We need to tell them where it's going to be. And I thought Ron was trying. I know that they've done Ron. some planting at the um, foot property. Mm -hmm. They were talking about doing some planting on the golf course. Mm -hmm. And we had requested 40 trees, as mm -hmm. I recall. 
So we just, I think we just need to be more specific about where they're going to go and finish this up because they've, you know, been waiting. Didn't or the commission has just mm -hmm. We did, but we haven't heard anything back, so we need to get back with her, I guess. You have a suggestion? He was sort of reluctant about that, but. We did have plenty of gold medals, but that wasn't related, though, was it? No, no, I don't think so. Mm -mm. It's just, we just, we need to plant 40 trees. And how many have we planted, would you guess? I don't know. Ron, I think Ron knows. I do not. Yeah. And, uh, you know, suggestions from the select board would be if there are places in town that you feel like there are trees that ought to get planted. Or along the river, if there's gaps along the river. Yeah, I know. Um, Jess mentioned the river. Mm -hmm. Specifically, there were places along the river that she thought could benefit from some additional planting. My suggestion I gave you before, which was that whole area around Gold Meadows used to have apple orchards, and I think you should plant 40 apple trees somewhere on Gold Meadows and create a public orchard for folks to go there in the fall. That's what I think. Feed the, feed the world. <laughs> Except our apple, seed. apple trees native. Well, yes, there's native oh, sure. yeah. Yeah. And there's a big enough space there for 40 apple trees. Sure. But then it's no longer the open meadow, which is the habitat for ground nesting birds. They don't like trees. Yeah, but you got a ton. Of, you got what three meadows really? You got, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, just extend it's the a thought. Extend the one. Extend the one. Uh, anyway, so you asked for a suggestion. That's my suggestion. Or plan them behind you this building. You know, we got we took out a ballpark in town hall, and 40 of them were reset in the ballpark. I don't care where you plant apple trees, I just like fruit trees. Okay, well, we'll consider that, I guess. Any other suggestions? Or maybe we just need to we need to nail this down because they've been waiting. Sure. So yes. how about one more email to just saying okay. where where yes. were you thinking along the river yeah. and keep an orchard as a backup? Or maybe both. Or maybe both twenty and twenty. Two trees makes an orchard. You don't need all four. Yeah, maybe twenty and we don't 20. know how many have been planted, so we need mm -hmm. to ask Ryan. Right. I mean if we want to do something along the river, why don't you take out that awful ancient illegal chain link fence behind town hall, you know, behind the old ball field that is all broken down, that it hurts animal migration. As you take that out, you can plant some trees along there. Good thought. Okay. Good idea. Definitely. Who would we need? Is that town from? property? <laughs> that is not. Well, no, did we, is that what we traded with Laurel Hill? There's a Laurel Hill. Right, no, but remember when we, we traded some part of it with Laurel Hill when, when they redid the map a couple of years back. I'm not sure. But either way, I think it should be, you know, it's like, it's ridiculous. It's falling down, it's rusted. It looks terrible. It's feet tall. Everything about it's illegal. It's dangerous. So would we have to go to the select board to do that? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. So those are three good possibilities. Okay. Can we find out whose property it is? We can tell you right now. Okay. That would be good. I think I would agree with Carol. You start with 20. Yeah. And, uh, well, we know, and we need to know how many were already planted. Yeah. Um, okay. In, in a prominent place, if it's going to be. Yeah. Would you know, I? It should be those criteria like that. Um, okay. What I don't see on the agenda is the railroad. I don't know what, if we've had any further. We haven't heard anything from them lately. I did take it off just because. Did did the letter get sent? Did the letter get sent? No, I don't think so. so. We I I sent a revised version after the last meeting. Yeah. Um, okay. I think I sent it on August twenty seventh, and it just needed if the commission was okay with it, it just needed okay. Ron's signature, and I I would recommend that it goes on Town of Stockbridge letterhead. I did not send it. Did Ron um, sign it? I don't know if Ron, I didn't, Ron did not say anything to me about it. 
Um, I asked him on the site visit, I asked him, and I thought he said he thought it was fine, but he needs to sign it. That's what he's John, that Oh, okay. Okay. So, and you had listed dates in that letter, I think, including today. So that, um, that would probably need yeah, to today's meeting might, might be one of the ones that I listed. Yeah, because it was two or three weeks ago that I sent it. Right. So we would need to take that out and um, update it. Yeah, update it. And Ron needs to sign and send it. And okay. It if you can send it to me again, I'll get in touch with Ron, make sure he's on board with this because I have. I haven't heard anything from him about it. Okay, I replied to all to that very email just a few minutes ago to send you the Beaver um, water yep. level control device. Yeah, I saw so that. Is it, if you scroll down, is that letter still attached? Um, I don't see a letter attachment. Okay. I can send it. I can send it again. Okay, great. I only see the, the beaver okay. device. Send it. Did everybody else get that letter that I sent out on August 27th? I yes. Did. yes. Yeah, thought it was okay. a good letter. Yeah. Okay, great. So it looks like the fence is on Stockbridge property. The fence is on town of Stockbridge property. Okay. All right. So what do we have to do, to, uh, Patrick or Jamie? Who do we have to, what do we have to do in order to? Full of fence and plan a trip. Yeah, no, I was looking for who owned the property. It looks like the town owns the property that we're talking about. It's, it's all part of the ball park. But what do we need to do to? So can highway just take it well, down? Can just came, what? The fence? Can yeah. highway take highway it down? Highway take it down if we have. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, they, they've done it before. I, I, if I it's our property. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we just, uh, I'll, I'll, one of us should talk to Michael tomorrow morning to say, yeah, so is that where you want to put the trees? I was looking for the map. Sorry, I missed the last minute. I don't want that. I, I think I think it would be. I think taking out the fence and putting trees there would be a good thing. Sure. Um, put in twenty native. Yeah, yeah. not hemlock. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, native for So that's. I mean, that's just great. We can. Native apple trees look really happy. Should we ask <laughs> Jess Toro? <laughs> We could, but if we use up if we use up our quota or our request of forty trees, we do twenty apple trees and twenty along the river. Then we're we've already I mean we've already done some, so we don't know how many we still have to do. So I think that'll probably cover it, and we can get this off. No cross Yeah, you did. Five different varieties, four each or something. Yeah. Yeah. Just mix them I'd love to do um, heritage breed apples. We had Ooh, make some nice. suggestions. We had those wonderful trees in our what used to be my house. <laughs> One of them just fell down. Very sad. Everybody okay with that? Sounds great. Okay. okay. So back to Dave. No, can I? We'll try to get Ron to sign that ASAP and get it out yep. and maybe get yeah. into the next meeting if possible so we can keep this moving. Yep. Um, did you have something else you wanted from the planning board? Marie did. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm just here um, on the planning board to make aware that we're beginning to think about um, looking at our bylaws and seeing where we need to um, fix upgrade. Is there a problem with any of them um, that I haven't looked at in a while? So you guys as ConCom people, I know Sally had a couple of questions about um, the bylaws of, you know, maybe the LPOD or around the bowl or something. I know you had a couple. So next Tuesday, at our meeting, we're going to kind of begin to make a list of bylaws that might need to be looked at and upgraded. And if anybody feels there's there's something that um, should be should be done, so if you guys have any suggestions, us, um, you can let me know or Jennifer, our secretary. I think and, um, if I had our to, our meeting is also on Zoom and and here. Um, I would strongly suggest that you consider climate 
mm -hmm. change yes. and water level rise when you're considering your yeah. um, new yeah. bylaws. I mean, those are the kind of things we need to begin to upgrade. Yeah, because as, as I've been saying ad nauseum for I don't know how many years, what's now a buffer zone is soon going to be a resource area. And so if people are permitted to put a septic system in some place that's going to be wet, you know, it's going to fail. And not only is it a big deal for the for everybody, but it's a big deal for the homeowner if ultimately they can't, you know, if their septic system fails and they have to build a new one. Right. So, and I don't know if it's you or us, but floodplain. Yeah, I mean, and there may be things that we would work out together. Floodplain bylaw. Yeah. You know, sometimes. Which is what we'd like to do as well. You know, yeah. Some things both of us sort of cover. I don't know. So, if anybody has any bylaws that they feel are not working for us now, that are old and we need to change. Well, I think your bylaw for the. Th the 35 foot buffer is excellent, but I don't think that it's been buffer from the lake. Yeah, I don't think it's been um, upheld or enforced as well as it should could be. You know, we try to. I mean, the footprint thing is if the lake rises, obviously right. the, being on the same footprint. <laughs> you know, it might make a difference. In yeah. The, the lake can't rise too much, though, with the spillway. Yeah. Right, because they can they can draw it down. But right. They won't let the lake rise too much. But she's done, guys. We're asking about conservation bylaws, and I know this might not be the most popular idea in the world. What can my dog today down really drive? I won't call out the home barn, but about 300 feet, so just outside the LPOD, buffer zone, whatever it is. They literally took out two and a half acres of forest and have added sod to put a front lawn. We're about to spend two and a half million dollars to dredge the lake. A plus with the SBA with the generosity raise. Where we're talking about, you know, all the challenges on climate. We got all these things going on, and you got people three hundred feet from the lake, not only put, cutting out two, two and a half acres of trees and putting down sod, but they put 1,500 foot of six foot tall chain link fence on each side because God knows we don't want the critters coming through the yard, going from north to south or east to west, wherever it is. Well, how did they mean, get away with I'll doing deal that? With the fence. I'll deal with the fence, no worries about that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but the fact of the matter is that to, to, uh, to, uh, to Sally's point, you know, we need natural vegetation in along our waterways, uh, along Lily Pond, along Larry Brook, along uh, along Lily Brook, and certainly around the lake. And you know, and uh, and this idea that we're going to replace it with with grass that we're going to you know uh, basically fertilize. You know, <laughs> aside from the environmental impacts, we're spending so much money to keep keep this at bay, and it is insane that we're then allowing turning around and allowing people to basically because you know, like, somebody likes. More than so, what kind of bylaw are you proposing? I think you should make it so that it's a lot harder to do what happened. Go look at, go look at it really dry, just drive by. You can see it. You can see the uh, the uh, the backhoes that are right there right now. Yep, you know, and it's not within the buffer. It's not within the term for the LPOD. So, yep. so there's no regulations that would control no it. No, that's your point. Yeah. How, many, feet, how many? How many? Make it harder to cut trees. Next to water, waterways or water or water bodies. I thought it is. Excuse me, um, but I thought it is. You need a permit to take down. No, not outside the zone. Not, not outside not the outside zone. zone. So, how many? How how much? How much? How big is the is the disturbance? Ten thousand square feet. Well over an acre is forty thousand. So then we have the stormwater bylaw. Well, okay, then someone should get over there. Let them wait for uh, you can meet the building inspector over there this week. I, David, can can I have a second just for, yeah. for the stormwater bylaw? Um, I thought single family homes were exempt. Is that not from our town? Well, you're you're muted. Yeah, under the mass stormwater standards, single family houses are exempt. Why did those people present the stormwater? package if because that's the town by that's not a that's not a state that's the town, town bylaw and the town bylaw the reason that we have it is to prevent exactly what patrick is talking about something some disturbance over ten thousand square feet which is likely in our opinion to um affect or impact 
a resource area even though it's not under the wetlands protection act it is nevertheless town bylaw so what's the address 10 11. 11. so um we can take a look and another question for you dave are you seeing floodplain bylaws in other towns no no none, none in western massachusetts Doesn't mean we can't get one. Is that it? No. Well, I, I mean, it. bordering land subject to flooding is one of the resource areas protected by the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, and the standards, the general performance standard for doing work in BLSF, are, it's fairly strict. So, this says 11 Wheatley is in Lennox. Am I doing something wrong? Yes. I mean, their address was not. It has to be in Stockbridge. No, no, no. If you look at the GIS map from the town website, you can find it pretty, pretty straightforward. It has to be in Stockbridge. Yeah, well, all, all of us. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, why don't you, why don't you double click it in Stockbridge? That's what he's yeah. saying. Is he's looking at it and it says Lennox. No, it's, it's all Stockbridge. Stockbridge, Stockbridge, all Stockbridge Road. That's yep. his mailing address. Do you have COVID, David? I'm Did sick. Yeah, I don't know. My kids brought something home nasty from school and I wondered I got it. I and I'm on the road on top of it doing work. So. I wondered if you were isolated at a hotel because you had COVID or something. <laughs> Not intentionally. Okay. All right. So, okay. Yes, thank you. I just wanted you guys to know that. Yeah, yeah no, thank you. So if you, if, you know, if there are bylaws that you should be somehow yep. I'd like, upgraded, you know. I like the small. idea of something making it harder to cut trees closer to the waterway. Yeah, we can work on that. So you're here. Well, did you want to tell us? Did you want to speak with us? I'm Richard Copeland. Uh, no. you didn't get the, uh, this is sort of a fact finding mission. Yeah. Uh, Pleasure to meet all of you. We, can you is we, it uh, Copeland like in yeah. Aaron? I wish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but is that how you spell it? Right. It depends on it. It's K. Which part of the world it came from and changed your name. Uh, so how do you spell it? K-O-P is in Peter L-I-N. Okay. And uh, we lived at 21 Hawthorne Road uh, for about 28 years. Uh, that's, if you don't know, it's a red barn, white house, just south of the Wheatley, I mean, White Plains Road. And uh, there's a large pond at the back of our house. You've probably seen it as you drive by. Actually, you can see part of it. And about five years, six years ago, we started to notice some weed growth. I wasn't too concerned. And then it started to accelerate. And I was talking to Chuck, and I've spoken to Patrick. And uh, what I'm looking for is some advice, assistance, some, we don't want to use algicides, obviously. I, I'm a physician, but in my previous life, I was uh, uh, a, 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 I want to call an ecologist. I actually discovered a new species of animal. Which is it's for species. you. Uh, what is it? Back then, when I was coming out, you couldn't make a living being, uh, in, it, just read the silent spring and you would have understood that. <laughs> yeah. uh, so what I'm here is just, uh, uh, asking for some assistance if it's available. I, I know that the uh, area just uh, south of us across from the lake where there's a holding pond has a similar growth. I noticed the it's, it's just exploding as well. And that pond that we have actually is part of that water stream. It's part of the same so it's going to grow whatever you guys grow in that pond, yeah. in that holding area. So, uh, so I and, and, and Chuck said that maybe the best thing is just pull them out. And I was telling him, firstly, uh, it's a muddy pond. If you walk in, it will never see you again. So don't. <laughs> you're, not, you're not invited. Um, so um, I once went in with waiters up to here, and it was up to here before my wife came and pulled me out. Uh, I've tried pulling them out, mainly if I, I, I got some group in Minnesota that's a pond expert to try to look at what this species is, <laughs> and they asked me to pull this out, and I'm not joking. 
the root system is almost as long as the part that you see above the water. And getting it out is impossible. It's not something we can just willy-nilly get into a raft and start pulling out. And uh, so we're sort of flummoxed, and it's starting to get. I, I don't want to sum. I don't want to, you know, have a. a there, um, uh, and uh, so we're flummoxed. I'm not just throwing this at the court, and you know, asking you what's available. What what does the town have as resources? What would, if not something you people have, you recommend? Uh, I tried to get a hold of uh, Jess Toro, as we were talking about, and she's so busy that uh, not been able to get in touch with her just for recommendations. She would, she would be the resource. Yeah, just but try to get. Should I kidnap her one night? Or yeah, one that's a thought. <laughs> try that. Okay. So it's she's tough. <laughs> and on a screen too. And they start over at, at the causeway, you know, obviously on the uh, on the east side of the causeway, and it is and spreading throughout that entire wetland. And and you know, and I know that uh, I know that I, I think what just did at Larry Water has been very successful. It was a one-time application. Uh, you know, obviously the state with the burn off at Lake Agarwal, you know, there's a number of strategies to use, but we're losing that entire area to these invasives. And the same thing has happened over by Gold Meadows in that corner. And the same thing has happened on the northeast corner of Lily Pond. And the whole area is basically, you know, basically just like to take over and we're letting them take over. And it'd be great if the Conservation Commission had a plan for those three sets of wetlands, because, you know, we're basically just doing nothing is doing something in this, this day and age, you know? It's, it's great. So we have we have a whole about four acres worth of Phragmites that I would love for somebody to get rid of. I would love to do to if if the state were interested to to come in and do a controlled burn or something. But I don't know who pays for it because it's not going to be us. Can we ask uh, can we ask our consultant? Yeah. You know, what the open water plan yeah, is? Is a homeowner thing or? Um, I think Division of Fisheries and Wildlife has. An annual grant program for habitat improvement that you might look into. Um, we can get money to do this. Of course, filling out one of those grant applications is no yeah. small task. <laughs> and they and but they do cover invasive removal. Oh yeah, yeah for habitat enhancement. Does anyone have an idea what the budget is per acre for fragmented removal? I have no idea. I mean, I mean, I know that the grant that just got for uh, for Larry Wong was like six or eighty thousand dollars, and it was a pretty extensive, you know, uh, application. And one time application really what, what did it because it usually. Yeah, just, uh, it's, 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 I think she. I think. I think she did it more than once. One time oh, application. I'm pretty sure. Do it. But my point, I think, is the bigger point is you, you don't realize it's happening. I watched that uh, holding pond. And uh, I saw I had some pictures. I mean, I should show it to you. Somebody was standing in uh, seven, eight years ago. It was very different looking. And it's just, and if we don't do something now or begin to the process, we're, it's going to be overwhelming because that waterway is consistent with others. I and mean, as you said, there are others that you know. So um, I think it's more expensive to deal with the longer you wait. Yeah. You know? So here we are. No, I don't know, if, you know. Is there some work in a subset of your group of people that want to apply for a fish? I mean, that would be great. I'm happy to look at that application and uh, possibly for Kampusa Bog, too. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, if it means putting it in the paper and you want help, I'll, I'll be happy to do that. Well, I mean, consider that my property is the headwaters of the Kampusa Bog, and it's the. Uh, That's where it's starting. That's where it's starting. I, mean, I think we should. I think we should map the worst fire mighties problems in the town. I think we should do a top bottom. Rather, let's not whack a mole it. Let's let's actually come up with a plan. And if it costs a quarter million dollars, let's deal with it. If the free applications or whatever, let's deal with it. We'll get some grant money. We'll appropriate some money. You know, and we'll basically like because you know that they, they aren't going away on their own. Look at you know? Clark Pond. Yeah, Clark Pond is more than just saying. Park <laughs> Pond doesn't even exist anymore for the most part. No, no. it's just all these Sheffield did a, uh, a little test with a different piece of equipment. 
I understand that it was like rollers, you know, that were two rollers. They were, David? I don't want to lose it. I'm here. David, I just wanted to drill down to. Excuse me one second. I just want to catch him. Just. Do you know what happened in Sheffield when they did that test on that equipment that with ringers or, you know, rollers would pull plant weeds or whatever they are up by the roots and then they could harvest was it, it? Was it a mechanical harvester? In a it was mechanical harvesting and it was taking the roots as well as the, you know, the upper part. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the species were? Or was that they were going? I think it was Eurasian no foil. Yeah, but um, I think I had the feeling from the description um, that it would handle pretty heavy root systems. Is uh, this the? If is you is could this pull the, it out. Is this that state owned? Is it Three Mile Pond? That state yeah. owned? Yeah, and I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't offhand. I don't know. Was it Jess that did it? No, uh, the the head of the conservation commission was what Ward, Ward, Ward. Ward. <clears throat> and he so he would know the answer to okay. that, I think. Uh, Don Don Ward, not yeah. Don was, Ward, uh, Don. Yeah, yeah, I can ask him. Yeah, that would be helpful. Certainly, if you did do something like that. Yes. I imagine you don't do it yourself. You hire a company or somebody. Else. Oh, yeah, it's, a, it's a big deal. You'd want to be permitted just to be protected. Yeah. Also, it's not do it yourself with your mud problem. <laughs> no, I, didn't, I picture the one. <laughs> uh, by the way, this guy invented LASIK. He's so modest. No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, I did it. I invented the other guy. I'm a serial, really? serial getting into uh -huh. trouble inventing things. Uh, I, met, I invented the controller mapping system. The map's the eye. Yeah, if you go, you know, if you need a transplant today, everyone uses it. It's a, it's a color-coded mapping process. Process you've probably seen it. Thank you. Were you the U.S. or Canada when you when we did that? Yeah, well, Sorry. Canada got approval. Yeah. You know, the FDA didn't approve that. Ah. But our tip, and part of it was that our technology wasn't available early on, mm -hmm. and the FDA approved LASIK based on our protocols. Thank you. Day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I get a dollar. My, my way to describe it was five words, by the way. <laughs> so, thank you. So, you understand how that yeah, Dave, system you like, go, you can just go in and just keep pulling, pulling. And all set? Thank you, Dave. See you on the 22nd. Thank okay. you. Feel better. Feel better. All right. Thank you. Good night. Good night. I was. Those rotten children, I'm waiting for my grandchildren to hit me with something. So I will follow up with Division of Fish and Wildlife and see what I can do. But they, they, the there's lots of ways where they try to do it, whether they're cutting underwater or whether they I'm they sure it's talking. <laughs> they're always the herbicide, whether they burn do you have to or they mechanically pull it out. But there's no easy way. And yeah, like, you know, I, I don't think I'm, Chuck, I'm going to be doing it myself, yeah. but I think finding out who the head of the Conservation Commission was asking what they did, who they used, the company, whatever it is, might be helpful for me personally. It was a demonstration project, I think. So they, oh, really? Yeah. They've, they've been talking about the controlled yeah. burn for a long Everything. time, though. But they yeah. it's say, cutting it. You just, but I don't know that it comes back, back very yeah. successful. Thousands of extra I see just kind of early early season, season, Wednesday and kind a of group with her. I'll ask her about it. Uh, she she uh, responds. Because I don't want... I, the, they say cattle grazing. I don't want it's for us to be... Yes, grass eating. Can we make a motion? Can we make a motion here? I make that motion. Close, uh, close the public hearing. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.